Um, all right. So uh, sounds like what you're saying is, is um, we should listen to Pell, meaning that there is highly likely to be more pain ahead of us here to be taken. Yep. Um, you didn't use this word, but I'm going to put it in your mouth and you can correct me. Um, but I, I, I think you would say that the bottom is not yet in for the, the bear market that, that got underway last year. I agree with that. Yep. Okay. Uh, well, so well, just to expand, yeah. not only do I agree with that, but I think the bottom could be a lot lower than most, even the people say recession, a little correction. I think it's going to be worse. Okay. Um, and sorry, worse. You're applying uh, that to the recession, like, you're applying that to the correction, uh, market correction, uh, or applying it to both. <laughs> sorry, the recession is going to be worse than analysts expect, and the bottom is going to be lower than analysts expect. We could be looking from the current levels. Bear, bear in mind, uh, we're down significantly from January 1st, 2022. In the case of the NASDAQ, the turnaround actually started in November 2021. Uh, so we're down from those levels. Uh, we're, we're, you know, we've kind of maybe reached some uh, you know, moving average, but we're not, we're ne nowhere near the old highs. But um, that it could go down, easily go down 30%. And it wouldn't shock me if it was down 50%. You're looking at, you know, S&P, you know, 2000, 2100, something like that. All right. Um, all right. And that would be, that would be pain. That would qualify as pain. <laughs> all right. Um, Jim, uh, this has been excellent so far. And what's wonderful is you, you've blown through a ton of my questions, which is uh, you're, you're the best thing uh, to happen to an interviewer like me. Um, because you just do my job for me, which is wonderful. Um, let's see here. Um, so obviously, I want to get to okay. So you know, what are some ways in which people should position for what you're talking about coming? Uh, you gave us a view of that last time you were on the channel. Um, so I just want to revisit that. But but before I do, there's a couple other macro topics um, I want to pick your brain on, um, largely because these are things you write about a lot. Um, uh, but real quick, I guess we'll, let's stick on the recession just for one second because there's the um, there's the, the the market pundit discussion you know that that we like to have about okay you know we 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 think that uh, earnings could compress by X amount or you know stocks could go down to whatever but then there's the human cost right you know bad recessions generally come along with um, with a lot of job losses mm -hmm. right so there's a there's a, there's a lot of economic and fin or fin financial and economic people uh, pain that people take on because their stock portfolios go down or their housing prices correct and US housing market certainly seems to be you know committed now to correcting right. um but but then there's the real human cost of people you know losing their jobs and and basically just having a, a loss of a damage to their future prospects right um if you look at the employment data the unemployment data and the payroll data um to me, that feels almost like a fairy tale at this point in time. Uh, the, the the actual stats that the Fed seems to be navigating by in terms of, oh, the job market still seems super robust. Um, you know, the, the, there's a lot of people that have talked about the fact that some of these numbers just seem, they don't match a lot of other data sets, you know, in, in the reality on the ground in a lot of companies. And, and I'd love to get your opinion on that. But, but where I'm trying to go with this is, do you see given that this recession could be worse than most are expecting right now, there being, you know, wide scale layoffs of the sort we've seen in some of the bad, the, the worst, the bad previous recessions like 08, like 01? The answer is yes. First of all, we're seeing it already. Um, so, you know, I don't match the company to the exact number, but layoffs on order of magnitude 10,000 to 20,000 terminated employees at Google, Amazon, uh, Facebook, um, you know, and other other tech names. Uh, it affects other sectors as well, but tech in particular has engaged in a massive series of layoffs. Um, and so people go, well, wait a second, how come the it hasn't shown up in the unemployment numbers? Because the uh, the unemployment rate is um, it's around 3.5, 3.6, and the exact number. It's right in that neighborhood, 3.5, 3.6. We haven't seen that level of unemployment that low. That is since the 1960s. This isn't like oh, a good year or a good debt. You know, this is the lowest since the 1960s. Um, and so, and the Fed is absolutely looking at that. You're right about that, Adam. And they're saying, uh, and of course, they believe in the Phillips curve, which is junk science. But the Phillips curve, for those who are not familiar, says there's an inverse relationship between unemployment and inflation. So if unemployment is high, inflation is low. And if unemployment comes down, inflation goes up. And so if you want to 
get inflation down, you should expect to bring unemployment up. That's what the Fed believes. What I just said is nonsense. It's not true. Um, if you think of a matrix of unemployment and uh, inflation, what did we have in the late 1970s? We had high unemployment and high inflation. What did we have between 2009 and 2019? We had low unemployment and low inflation. Right. What do we have now? Low unemployment and high inflation. So as you can fill in every box in the matrix, which means there's no correlation. I mean, you can describe it, you can calculate it, you can put it on a chart, but there's no correlation. Last time I looked at the Phillips curve, it was flat. At least where I went to school, curves were curved. Uh, so it, it's, it's junk. But the Fed believes it. Uh, again, it doesn't matter what I think. It matters what the Fed thinks. They so say you got to put yourself in their minds to figure it out. So as far as they're concerned, that kind of those kind of unemployment numbers, lowest since the 1960s, that's inflationary. They got to get those numbers up. Now, here's what the Fed is uh, is missing, or maybe everybody's missing. When you hear these layoff announcements, people are like, well, if they're laying off, why isn't, why isn't the unemployment rate going up? Well, the answer is they have to announce the layoffs. There's all kinds of statute, you know, SEC, WARN Act. WARN Act, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So if I'm going to fire 10,000 people, I got to tell the world I'm firing 10,000 people. It doesn't mean I fire them that day. I might fire them you know, on a rolling basis over the next 30 days. And it doesn't mean they walk out the door empty handed and head for the unemployment office. I might give them three months severance, six months severance, et cetera. And so when do they actually show up to the unemployment office and say, you know, give me a check? It might not be till this spring. So so the layoff announcements are out there, um, but the unemployment rate hasn't budged because there is a lag three months. But that's why I said interest rates uh, lag the business cycle and they do. Unemployment lags the business cycle. Unemployment is a lagging indicator. When you're an employer, entrepreneur, and you're in any kind of distress, you know, not as many customers walking in the door, you'll do everything you can to avoid laying people off. You'll, you know, be late on the rent. You'll turn down the lights. You know, you know, uh, find a cheaper laundry, whatever it takes. Um, and then by the time you get around to firing people, you run out of options. Like oh, I've done everything I can. Now my business is in jeopardy. I have to fire some people. So that, and then combine that with what I just said about severance and you know, rolling terminations, et cetera, it's a lagging indicator. But we know enough right now here, um, uh, you know, kind of in, uh, in early, you know, late January, early February, we know enough right now to know that number's going up this spring. But that's not inconsistent with the fact that we're already in a recession. It's exactly what you would expect, um, that unemployment's a lagging indicator. Now, having said that, what else is the Fed missing? Well, I, uh, um, by the way, Adam, you mentioned, um, uh, uh, wages uh, or the, the salaries that one i just i just shake my head everyone was like well um you know real wage no, not real not real that's the point wages are up five yeah. percent on an annualized basis 5.2 percent on an annualized basis i'm like yeah and inflation's seven percent or six percent so your real wage just went down one or two points because when, when the when the bureau of labor statistics reports those wage numbers those are nominal numbers i'm not saying they're fake but you have to know that they're nominal and you have to subtract inflation to find out what's happening to real wages. And the answer is real wages have been going down for a couple of years because um, they're, they're, it runs around 5% annualized, give or take. It sounds like hey, 5% raise, what, what do you want? Well, yeah, but with 8 9% inflation or even 6% inflation, um, your real wage is going down. So that's not a, a robust number at all. The Fed, by the way, the Fed wants to make, make it worse. The Fed agrees that uh, those wage gains are too high. But my point is, in real terms, they're actually going down, but the Fed wants them to go down more. That, that's, that would be one way to put it. Um, although, you know, if you, if you get inflation down and, and wages are constant, then the real wage goes up relative to where it was before. Uh, but if you're unemployed, you have no wage. So that's that's another issue. Now, what the Fed is missing, and it's a long list, but uh, there's something called the labor force participation rate. Now, the labor force participation rate, you just take the number of people working divided by the total working age population. It's all, it's all you do. It's not sophisticated. Um, and that number today is around 61.2, uh, 61, give or take uh, percent. But as recently as um, 2000, that, that number was over 70%. Uh, and it's come down ever since. And it's, it dropped like a stone during uh, 2020, during the pandemic lockdown. 
came back a little bit, but not much. Um, and it's, uh, you, you know, the, the reason, the reason it got, first of all, it's never a hundred percent. It shouldn't be. There are legitimate reasons to be working age population, and not working. You're, um, you're a homemaker, you're a, a student, uh, you're an early retiree, right. uh, you're in the military. Yeah. You're in the, you know, there's, there's a bunch of perfectly good reasons. So it's never a hundred percent, not even close. But 70 is pretty high and 60 is pretty low. Uh, so, and the, the trend has been down. So that leaves, uh, relative to kind of a normalized number, that leaves about eight to 10 million people between the ages of 25 and 54 who are not in the workforce. Uh, and again, even if you allow for legitimate reasons for a lot of them, there's a big untapped labor pool. There are a lot of people who are sitting home, uh, watching, you know, the football playoffs and not going to the unemployment office. That's, see, that's the thing. You have to go to the unemployment office online or whatever. You have to at least look at a job to be counted as unemployed. If you're not looking, you're not counted as unemployed, but you're still a person. You're still capable of working. You're just not looking, which is a very negative sign, by the way. But if you throw, if you took that group and threw it into the unemployment numbers, the way the Bureau of Labor Statistics calculates it, unemployment would be about 9%. And yeah. that's, a, that's a depression level of unemployment.